Hi, I'm Jeff Davis, and this is a BigQuery Concepts video brought to you by ROI Training. In this video, we're going to look at how you can recover data that's been accidentally or perhaps maliciously deleted from your BigQuery dataset. Let's switch over to my demo environment and we'll take a look at how it works. So you can see that we've got a data set here and we're going to be working primarily with the order table. If I look at the metadata for the order table, I see that there are basically 1 million rows or 1 million orders that have been stored in BigQuery. We're going to do a query here to find just the orders that took place on June the 21st of 2018. So we specify the table that we're querying, we specify the columns that we want to project, we filter it based on the order date. If we run this, it'll take less than a half a second to run the query. You can see that we have lots of different order numbers, but all of the orders took place on June the 21st. And there's a total of 2,896 orders that took place on that date. So now we're going to delete the data. And I'm just going to use a DDL query here. So I'm going to find all of the rows where the order date is June the 21st, and I'm going to delete them. So we'll run this, and this takes between one and two seconds to complete. And you can see that it took about 1.4 seconds, and it deleted 2,896 rows. If we go back and we were to rerun this query, we should get zero rows returned because all of those rows have been deleted. If we look at the metadata for this table, you can see that now there are no longer 1 million rows, but there's just over 997,000 rows. So the data is gone. The question is, how can we get it back? And the answer is, we're going to use time travel. Seriously, the feature is called time travel. If you go and you look at this article, we'll put the link to this article in the description of the video, you can see that Google says you can access historical versions of your data using time travel. Basically, anytime you update a table, Google takes a snapshot of that table, and then you can go back to a previous snapshot, and you can query the table as it was at a given timestamp rather than how it is now. So let's try that out. We're going to start our query the same way that we did before. We're going to specify the table, and we're going to specify the columns that we want to project. But we're going to add a clause to the from section of the query. And this clause is going to be for system time, as of, and then a timestamp. Okay? So we're going to specify a timestamp. This timestamp has to come after the creation time of the table. You can't go back to before the table existed. And Google only retains the snapshots for the last seven days. So this timestamp has, has to be between now and seven days ago. So I'm going to go back a couple of days ago and look at the table as it was then. And I'm going to search for rows that represent orders from June the 21st. So we're going to run this. And it executes pretty quickly, less than half a second. And you'll notice that it still sees the 2,896 rows, even though those rows are not visible in the current view of the table. So the data is there, and it's accessible to you. The question is, how do you restore it for future use? Well, one way that you could do it is you could use a DDL statement that will create a new table. This table is going to be called order restored. So we're going to leave the existing view of the order table as it is, and we're going to restore a version of the table that had the missing rows. Notice it's the same query here. We're just feeding that result set into the create table statement. So if we run that, it takes just a couple of seconds to run. Uh, so it took four seconds to complete, and it created this table. If we look at the metadata for this table, you can see that the creation time was right now, and you can see that there are one million rows. If we were to query this newly generated table, what we should see is that it returns my 2,896 rows. So we've recovered the data. The problem is the order restored table is a picture of the table as it was two days ago. If there were new rows added to the order table after two days ago, they're not represented. So now I've got a current view that's missing some data and an old view which has the data that was deleted but doesn't have subsequently added data. 
Typically, what you're going to want to do is go one step further and sort of merge these two tables. Grab the deleted rows and add them into the live order table. So you can do that with something like this. This is a DML statement that's doing a merge. It's looking at the restored table that has the deleted rows, as well as the live table, which has subsequently added rows. And we're basically going to look and see if there's a row in the restored table that's missing from the live table, we want to insert it. So we're going to run this, and this will take four or five seconds to complete. Uh, actually, it was fast today. It was three and a half seconds. You can see that it affected 2,896 rows. If we go back and we look at the metadata for the original live table, you'll notice it's gone from 997,000 back up to a million. If I query the live order table, we should see that there are, in fact, orders, 2,896 orders from June the 21st. And so there you go. We have the ability to find missing rows and add them back into our table. However, this assumes that the table still exists. What happens if people didn't just delete rows from the order table, but they deleted the entire table? Well, this article not only tells you how to write queries that you can use in the query editor in the web UI, but it also highlights the fact that you, if the table was deleted, you're going to get a query failure, but you can restore a table by copying a snapshot into a new live table using the command line tool. So if we scroll down a little bit, you can see that there's a command line tool called BQ, and we're going to use BQ, and we're going to use the copy command, and we're going to copy a table, okay? But we're going to copy it using something called a table decorator. We're going to use an at sign and specify the timestamp in milliseconds of the point from which we want to recover. So I can actually demonstrate that for you here. I'm going to actually delete this table. So again, this could be something that you did accidentally, or it could be something that somebody did on purpose. So that table is now gone. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to create a timestamp value in an environment variable. So basically, I'm just generating the number of milliseconds to a point a couple of days ago where I know the data was in the table. So I'm going to save that. And if we wanted to echo the target time just to see what that timestamp looks like, we could. right? So it's that's the timestamp. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the command line tool, bqcp right? This is the order table at a given timestamp, and I want to restore it to a table called order restored CLI. So we're going to run that, and it's going to submit a batch job. The batch job takes place very quickly. And if we go back now, and I do a refresh on this page, we should see that there's a newly generated table, which has the restored data. So if we go down here, you'll notice there's order restored CLI. And if I look, you can see that there are a million rows, including our 2,896 rows that were uh, generated or were deleted, but now have been restored. So hopefully you found this useful. Uh, if you think it's going to be something that you can use in the future, it'd be great if you could like the video. If you want to look at other videos on BigQuery and other GCP topics, check out the videos listed in our channel. And if you want to be notified about new videos that we produce, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Thanks very much.